On the 23rd of September, 1642, elements of the two main field armies met for the first time, southwest of Worcester, at Powick Bridge. A chance encounter would see the first cavalry engagement of the First Civil War result in a strategic and psychological loss for parliamentarian forces. The Royalists were able to secure passage of their baggage train, which was laden with plate and coin, bound for the King's base at Shrewsbury. This is the Battle of Powick Bridge. In January 1642, the King left London. Initially, he moved to York. Thatly, he moved to Nottingham, where he raised his standard. By the July, he was doing mass recruiting, and to do that, he consolidated it in one area, in the traditional royalist counties of Shropshire, and, Latley, and particularly Shrewsbury itself. But as with all troops, they need paying. And so Byron has been sent out with a baggage train to collect as much silver plate as possible and other supplies. He'd been to Oxfordshire, and now he was in Worcestershire, where we are now. A baggage train is a very valuable asset, and as part of that, he had a cavalry protection and Prince Rupert, the Duke of Cumberland, had been sent out from Shrewsbury under the King's orders to protect this baggage train, but also to show the colours to the people of Worcestershire to show who was here. But another important element of that was reporting back on the uh, Essex's army and where it was. But he wasn't expecting an engagement here at Powick Bridge. He had about 700 troops with him, purely for the aim of bringing this important baggage train back to Shrewsbury. With the King having left London in early 1642, it meant that London lay in the hands of the parliamentarians, and so did its trade, including the City of London, which meant that Parliament had money to play with. The Royalists did not. However, it was very important that any valuables, coin and plate didn't fall into the hands of the Royalists, because by doing so, it meant that they had money to finance the war. The Earl of Essex, who was parliamentarian commander at this point in the wars, sent a detachment of cavalry under the command of Nathaniel Fiennes to search out and hunt for what has become known as Byron's treasure. The detachment of cavalry under Colonel Fiennes arrived here on the 23rd of September 1642. Before they did, however, they did venture towards Worcester and found the gates of the city locked shut in front of them. Fiennes and his men retreated to here the southern bank of the River Team at Powick Bridge, where they got out of their saddle and arguably for the first time in many days had a well-deserved rest. But little did they know what was waiting for them on the other side of the bridge. One of the main reasons that the parliamentarians had withdrew to the southern bank of the River Team here at Powick was to be reinforced by infantry from the Gloucestershire Militia. The Parliamentarian Detachment of Cavalry had no infantry to support it. This had positives and negatives. The main positive was that it was a fast moving uh, sort of scouting force really. However, its drawback was it had no infantry to support it should it be involved in any skirmish or battle. With the Gloucestershire Militia not materialising, Fines had no other choice than to cross the bridge at Powick and head back towards Worcester in search of Byron and his baggage train. His cavalry troopers would have ridden across this very bridge, four wide, knee to knee, not anticipating what was lying in wait for them just over there. Fiennes knew that Byron's baggage train had left Worcester and was going through the area of St John's. Now, as you come over the bridge on this side, you'll see there's a slight rise. I believe this is quite pivotal in the battle. Lots of early accounts put that there was an ambush set by Prince Rupert's forces. I believe that these were just sentries. Why do I believe that? When you read the accounts of the day, Prince Rupert was sat, he'd taken his armor off. He had his favorite little dog with him. A lot of his senior commanders were around him having lunch. It doesn't seem good military etiquette to actually do that. A lot of Rupert's commanders were senior blokes. He had actually French officers over who were part of his family who knew the ways of war. I believe that finds his troops advanced up here, they came across sentries who, after doing an initial shot, warning shots or engaging shots, that spurred on Rupert to jump on his charger and go straight towards the parliamentarian lines, discharging shot, then engaging hand to hand. 
Prince Rupert had pressed home his advantage and caused disarray in the parliamentarian ranks. This caused a mass retreat. And as was with any large body of troops, trying to get them across a tiny bridge ain't gonna happen. As we learnt earlier, they were riding forward abreast earlier and we're talking nearly a thousand cavalry trying to get back across. So the only way to get back home was across the river. And as you can see now, the river's high. But according to weather reports at the time, they'd had several weeks of heavy rain, mud was up to the mid-calf, and there'd already been reports of early snow. So you can imagine this river was a lot higher. These were troops who were exhausted. They'd been in a surprise engagement. They were exhausted. They were dealing with the after effects of shock. And they were being pressed home as well by the, cavalry, by the Royalist cavalry. And they had to get across the river team here. This has got to be six foot at the moment. I reckon it was a lot higher then. Yes, the banks have been pushed back and widened in the 18th century, but you can see what type of banks they are. It is a hard, high bank, and you ain't gonna get up there with heavy horse, especially with all your kit. The Royalist report, 60 to 80 troops drowned in this river, in this very spot here. Other reports put it to 40 to 50, and I wouldn't be surprised at that, just looking at the depth of the river today. Utilizing some local knowledge, Danny takes Steve to Powick Church to show him something that he recently discovered and is a fascinating snapshot of what happened here during the English Civil War. So Steve, after this initial engagement at Poet Bridge, the Royalists, after this massive victory in a way, had a massive propaganda coup. They'd taken six or seven standards, they'd taken about 50, 60 prisoners, and they marched back to Shrewsbury unopposed. It was a, 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 basically a great initial victory and it actually helps with the Royalist cause. Parliamentarians, They'd been blooded and they'd gone in mass flight, basically, a part of the retreat across the river, had already, which we've already covered. Part of the troops had gone down to Tewkesbury and crossed over the river there. The rest, under the Earl of Essex, had recouped south, looking, basically, to, to regather their troops and what to do next. And, of course, what did come next was, with Fiennes' men coming from Powick through Upton to Pershaw, they eventually get back to Essex's army. And we have to remember at this point, we're only a month away from what would become Coynton Fight or the Battle of Edge Hill as we know it. But there's a few points about the action, shall we say, at Powick Bridge, which we have to cover. Um, it's called the Battle of Powick Bridge. We've called it the Battle of Powick Bridge. That's for YouTube uh, sort of statistics, of course, and to get more people <laughs> to watch it. But the honest, uh, honest part of it is, is it doesn't qualify, in our view, as a battle. It's a skirmish. It's a chance um, sort of happening that the parliamentarians and the royalists come across each other and as an action for. It's a very, very minor um, skirmish in that sense. Yes, we do have the main element of, the, of both armies coming together, really, arguably for the first time. It's not the first battle and it's not the first skirmish of the civil wars. By this point of September 1642, there's very small actions happening up at Hull when the king is denied entry and there is a, a few sort of uh, shots exchanged up there, shall we say. There's the action at Curdworth Bridge. Uh, so anyone who's been watching the HS2 uh, dig up there and has seen it in the news over the past 12 months. There was definitely action that happened up at Curdworth Bridge. But also there's a Battle of Southam as well where Lord Brooke and his parliamentarian force is uh, ahead of Essex's army, heading towards uh, Coventry, to that power base of Lord Brooke. But then also you have the Earl of Northampton and his royalists also on the opposing side at Southam. So yes, the Battle of Powick or skirmish at Powick as we should call it, is really interesting but it's definitely not the first action of the Civil War, and it certainly is not a battle. But what's this behind us, Danny? This is interesting, I'm, I'm excited, I'm excited. <laughs> well, I'm actually surprised. I've only been researching the Civil War for the past couple of months, thanks to this man right here, who's got me down to another rabbit hole of history. Guilty as charged. But I found something that he didn't know, <laughs> which I'm very chuffed about. And we're here at uh, Powick Church, and you can see on the wall here, we have several musket ball wow. indentations. As you can see, they're spread all over the wall. We've got a concentration here, but we have got a spread all over the wall. But this was from the very famous Battle of Worcester, which happened nine years later. As ever, thanks for watching. We as a team really hope that you've enjoyed this video. And if you have enjoyed it, why not watch some of our other episodes too? As ever, don't forget to hit the bell icon and subscribe to us, like this video and drop us a comment. What do you think of the Battle of Powick Bridge? Did you enjoy this episode? We'd love to hear from you. And where do you want us to go next? But until then, and until next time, keep history, history alive. alive.